Hey guys, how's everybody doing today? Uh, today we're gonna do something a little bit different. I'm gonna kind of show you what my deck building process looks like, and we're gonna go through a best of one standard event. So when I'm looking at building a deck, um, for instance, I'm gonna look at uh, mono white today. Um, what I'll do is I'll usually go all the way up to 250 cards if I need to, and just look at all the different cards that I wanna play to try to figure out how to narrow it down. Um, some of the first questions that I ask is, what is this color good at? So for instance, for mono white, um, what white does best is gaining life, destroying enchantments, and destroying artifacts, creatures that have evasion through flying typically, uh, exiling creatures, board wipes, um, and cheap efficient creatures. This is kind of what white is known for traditionally and what it's best at. So when I'm looking at finding cards that um, maybe want to fit the deck, I might also look for cards that are especially good at those kinds of roles. And then after that, I want to decide what kind of deck do I want to build. There's kind of four main archetypes of decks. You have aggressive decks, mid-range decks, control decks, and combo decks. And out of those four archetypes, I'm myself, uh, most comfortable with either aggressive or mid-range decks. And so I'm gonna kind of focus on those two. Uh, you know, if you know that you're a control player, by all means, you know, focus on that instead. And so when we're looking at building either, uh, in this case, an aggressive or a mid-range deck, we wanna look at our curve. Um, typically with aggressive decks, the mana uh, cost will typically end at three. Um, for mid-range decks, typically the mana cost is gonna end at either four or five. Um, with control decks, you're gonna see the full gamut. Um, you can also see sort of the full gamut with combo decks as well. And so I'm gonna be looking at, uh, for the most part, mana cost um, up to four with maybe a couple fives in there if need be. And then what I'll do is I'll go through and look at each specific mana cost uh, band to try to find cards that I wanna use. So for instance, if I wanted to look at four drops, I would just go ahead and look at my four drops in either white or artifact or colorless, and then go through and try to find cards that at least give me two for one value or better. Um, you know, when you're looking at an aggressive deck or a mid-range deck, typically you're not gonna have a lot of board wipes unless you can have them be um, asymmetrical. So for instance, some mid-range decks will use cards like um, maybe temporary lockdown and then have all their creatures be either three mana cost or up, which is kind of a nice strategy where you can, you know, create uh, asymmetries where you're able to, you know, punish the opponent but won't have it affect yourself. Um, but since I know I'm going to be using converted mana cost one and two in this deck, I'm not going to have too many of those type effects. Um, that being said, having one or two copies of a board wipe in a deck, <clears throat> in a, in a mid-range deck, can be powerful because A, your opponent won't expect it, and it is sometimes the only card that can get you out of a bad situation, you know, where if you've totally lost board control, um, it can be kind of an ace in the hole. And so, you know, in this deck here, we're going to run two copies of Sunfall. Um, and then we're going to find other cards here that will give us you know, at least a two for one in terms of value. So for example, I'm looking at cards like um, Gathering Throng, which, you know, no matter whether or not this is, you know, currently accepted in the meta or not, I'm really looking at kind of building a deck and seeing if there can be a potential. So this is sort of, you know, going through and this way you can kind of find, you know, unusual cards that maybe don't see a lot of play and potentially find homes for them. Um, Wedding Announcement, for example, Welcoming Vampire, Adeline. All these cards create at least a two for one in value. And then after that, I also look at, um, you know, maybe cards that I, I really, you know, wanna try for whatever reason, or cards that are very powerful at one thing, um, or cards that are, you know, very aggressive. But like, for instance, when I'm looking at my one drops here, um, Cheeky House Mouse is aggressive, but it also gives me this added benefit of being able to uh, cast a adventure spell. Um, Homestead Courage, you know, can be used on more than one creature. 
um, hopeful initiate can grow and then can also deal with artifacts or enchantments. Uh, Crowbot Haunch can provide um, equipment which then could be reusable if the creature dies and then also has the benefit here of being able to sacrifice it to create two tokens. Um, Lunark Veteran is very good at gaining life and so also when it dies you can replay it as a 1-1 flyer, etc. So this is kind of um, what I'm looking to do and I've sort of started this process already for this specific deck, narrowed it down a little bit, but now I'm going to try to battle test it with a standard best of one event. Um, you also want to make sure that, you know, whatever your card count is, you figure out the mana based on that card count. So for example, currently I have 187 cards in this deck, which means that if I'm looking at having 35% of my deck be lands, I'll need 65 lands. So I make sure that I also have 65 lands to fit that. And as you take cards out, you want to be adjusting your land count to match it. All right. Um, if you're new here, by the way, thank you so much for stopping by. Um, I really do appreciate you guys. And um, if you like my content, please consider subscribing, maybe dropping a like or a comment, or sharing it with a friend of yours who might also like my content. Um, for my returning viewers, thank you guys so much again for coming back and supporting me. It really does mean the world to me, and you guys are the reason that I'm making these videos. So thank you. All right, let's go ahead and jump into a standard event. Also, there's kind of the funny added benefit that while you're sort of testing it out, if you happen to run into a mill deck, <laughs> they might kind of laugh when they see your library is, you know, 180 to 200 cards or whatever. So that's always fun. But um, yeah, even though I kind of specialize in aggressive decks, you know, and also sometimes get my feet wet in like mid range, you know, I really respect players who also play control. Um, or combo. It's just something that I'm not personally have as much experience with or as good at, you know, naturally. And so it's something that I'd like to try every, every once in a while, but um, it's definitely not my strength. All right. So this opening hand looks great. We've got three land. We have a bunch of different cards and let's go ahead and jump in. <clears throat> we even have sort of a decent curve. No two drop, but that's okay. And this way, kind of testing it against sort of real decks um, is nice because, you know, you very quickly see which cards just are not going to work. So looks like we might be up against like Boris Convoke or maybe just some sort of just kind of just mono red deck of some kind. <clears throat> and I think I'm happy if they want to use a removal here. I think it's totally fine. Get it out of their hand. Okay, so let's go ahead and drop our Neighborhood Guardian. This is also a card which, even though it is just gives just one card, it gives sort of an implied benefit here whenever you play other creatures with power two or less. So it's a little bit more than, you know, just kind of a two two. Uh, but here again, you know, we're just trying to sort of run them out of, of their stuff. So happy to block here. Okay, Siege Veteran gets better over time, but we're going to just be trading off here. So I think I might rather go with the Gavany Dawn Guard, since it does have Ward, in case they've got some kind of removal.
And happy to make trades here. Right, we're just trying to preserve our life total at this point. Okay, so now we can play an Inquisitor and create a 3-3, three, three, which feels pretty good. <clears throat> we could also play a House Mouse and a Veteran and then have a like a 3-2 and a 2-2. Two, two. I think I'd actually rather get the Veteran going here. Although they're going to be equipping the Bone Splitter here, or the Bane Splitter, so we probably want to... Actually, maybe the Inquisitor is better here, because this, this way we can use the Inquisitor to block whatever they put the, the Bane Splitter on. Exarch, which is a little bit slow right now, so I think we just want to go with like the cheeky house mouse. Plus the veteran. Um, and I think we just want to make our veteran a 3-3 three, three, and then leave the house mouse as the 2-1. <laughs> Happy to block like this, and so now we will drop down to two. Starting to kind of take over a little bit, so really happy to see this. Here, this gives us another two bodies. Both with vigilance, and now we can put the veteran out of range. Um, we are at two, and they might have some direct damage, so it's possible that we should just get in right now. And then if we lose one of these guys, that's fine. I guess they could draw like a haste creature, in which case we would die. Um, hmm. Kind of a calculated risk. Like they could have like another Tomb Raider, they could have, but they could also just like get us with like Valdar and Epicure. So I think it's worth going for the attack here. They have pump, like monstrous rage. Okay, Bane Splitter doesn't do it. And now wedding announcement feels really good. And let's get our Exarch out there just to have like an extra blocker. Let's pay zero. And I think Let's just keep pushing on the veteran here since we can try to shorten the amount of turns we've got. Whew, scamp was a good draw, unfortunately. Yeah, so now I don't think there's anything we can do. We can't gain life. Um, We'd have to like attack and have lethal at the same time. <sighs> or like have a way of like killing our own creature. Unfortunately, I don't think we can. So I think this is just gonna be game. Oh well. 
We need like a zero power <laughs> creature. Ah, uh, well. Yeah, so it didn't quite get there, but um, we almost were able to. So a little more life gain, we might have been able to turn the corner there. Okay, this is going to be a mulligan. And this looks better. So let's go ahead and put back our Elish Norn. It's a little bit too expensive. And then kind of like through these games, try to like find like which which cards really impress us, which cards are maybe kind of duds or not as exciting. Obviously like in this deck, like there certainly are creatures that are not soldiers. So is it enough to just have like the, the counter coming on um, or is that just not good enough? So we could go Inquisitor here, could also just go Virtue. I think I might just want to go Virtue. Although actually Inquisitor will let us use Warden, so maybe let's do Inquisitor instead. And I definitely really like Norn Inquisitor. It, it has been kind of a powerful card when it came out, um, and it, it works really well with Warden. Okay, that seems like a nice little addition. So now we can go like Virtue plus Inspector. We could also go Veteran here. Um, Veteran actually also works well with Warden, which is kind of cool. So I think, hmm. I think maybe Inspector, because then we can like turn this into, uh, turn it into a 3-3, which is kind of nice. Or use Virtue, it's just a little bit more flexible. Guardian, yeah, I mean, Guardian is fine. I think we might be able to do a little better. And then here, I think we just want to sit back a little bit. Yeah, the Night Errant is really good. Especially with War Leader's Call.
and case is pretty nasty. Maybe let's go Virtue here. So we might, yeah, we want to be able to draw into five, but we're going to be facing a ton of damage coming in. So I think we want the Veteran and the Cheeky House Mouse. So yeah, unfortunately, I think we're just pretty much dead to this right now. They've just got too much action going. Boros Convoke is like such a powerful deck. It um, certainly is tier one. Yeah, into Recruiter. I think that's going to be lethal. Um, we have five blockers. Even if we block five creatures, one, two, three, four, five. Five. We're still taking 12. Yeah, that's going to do it. Okay, um, yeah, this hand looks great. And then the other thing you can do, um, instead of you know testing this through like a standard event, you totally don't have to do that. You could instead just you know do it through some like standard play games if you don't want to spend money. Completely get it. And like we do know that. You know, this is not going to stand up to like a highly tuned tier one deck, but it's going to help like eliminate or like find out like what's good, what's bad. You know, magic is definitely more fun if you win, but it's not always just about winning. It's it's partially about brewing and like trying to find out like how the cards interact well and, you know, see if you can find cards that are a bit unusual off the beaten path that that can work well together. Oh yeah, yeah, definitely happy to attack into Kemba. Here I think we just want to go for Evangelist so we can fully use Warden. Um, and then we can push for three. I think we're good on land. But yeah, like some of these cards we already know are good, like Sanguine Evangelist and Warden of the Inner Sky. Um, but some of them, like, um, I ran a couple games with, like, Gavany Dawnguard, and I was actually pretty impressed by its ability, like, being able to just go and, like, search for more creatures. It's a little bit slow, but it is kind of an interesting card. Um, Progenitor Exert, we're one mana away from being able to do it twice. So that feels pretty good, and it's nice with Warden also. I think I'm just going to go for Gavany Dawnguard this turn, though. Because <laughs> then we can still... Still use Warden. And I think we do want to keep that on top so we can go for Exarch next turn. And then I think I'm just going to sit 
just because I want to be able to pressure or at least keep the vendor away instead of giving them free scry. So now we can go Exarch for two. And this is really fun with Warden. Welcoming vampires seems like it'd be a lot of fun. And then do we wanna also, I think we maybe go one more time, unless they've got like removal. Still feels pretty good. And then in case things get like really out of hand, we've got the Sunfall back up. But what's fun is like if they don't cast any spells, if they just like our control deck and sit back, Dawn Guard will just go and search for a creature for us. Okay, happy to block here. All right, so let's go ahead and we could just like pass the turn, but I think playing the vampire still feels pretty good. Like we can go search if we let it go tonight. Um, actually, I guess we could just double flip and then search and that feels pretty good. Yeah, that's gonna do it. Okay, one and two. <laughs> we at least got one win. But again, like what I'm really getting out of this is like, it's really fun like seeing like how Exarch interacts with Warden, for instance, or, um, you know, the other, the two mana guy that makes a, uh, an incubator token. And yeah, this hand looks great. We've got lots of stuff to do. Spellbook vendor, I've always been really impressed by. Just creates so much virtual threat. Um, yeah, let's just, I guess, get some more life going here. So we are up against potentially domain. I suppose it could be Bant Toxic, but I think they usually don't run tap lands. So they're probably just gonna cycle the um, gain three life, um, whatever it's called. So let's get Vendor going. <laughs> They don't have access to binding yet, so we should be able to get this off without a hitch. 
I guess they could use like March or something like that, but still nice to get the scrying going. Okay, I don't think we need any more land right now. Yeah, herd migration, that's the card I was thinking of. So if they have a board wipe next turn, we probably don't want to just like completely play into it. So I think let's just draw a card here and then make another um, roll token. And let's, let's see, I guess if they have like angel for two next turn, I do want to play around it. So let's put this here just to play around angel. House Mouse, mm, I think we can do a little better. Sun Gold Sentinel, yeah, it's not bad. I guess we could like do that plus a land or, or I guess this plus like an inspector or like an officer if they have us reset. We kind of want more lands too, so we can go like Dawn Guard plus one of these. Hmm. Yeah, actually, maybe I'll maybe I'll try to get a land here. The nice thing here too is that we can just like keep putting on pressure with Vendor without overextending. And now if they have like, yeah, there's the angel for two. So the best they can do is get like a veteran. Unfortunately, it doesn't give us great attacks, but I think here we go Dawn Guard plus vendor roll. Yeah, now Dawn Guard, they won't be able to kill Angel with with uh, Angel for six because they need the ward. So they can get our vendor. Now we can Exarch for two. We could also just get Officer out and start drawing cards. And I actually kind of like that because then, um, then we can like pass the turn, let it go to night, and get an extra draw the following turn. We could try to shove in for four, but I don't want to just get the double block. I think that the Dawn Guard's a little bit more valuable. So here, I think we go Officer. Um, instead of playing out our hand, let's just use this to search. That's really nice actually for their deck. Oh man, they're gonna start playing off the top of, whew, that's really good in their deck. Um, I think we just take the damage. I don't wanna trade Dawn Guard for that. And I think we're at 27, we can take a little bit of damage here. 
I want to keep using officer. I guess let's let's look first. Nothing. Hmm. Yeah, maybe it's worth trading officer plus inspector. Because they can start swinging for a lot in the air. I think that's fine, actually. I guess we could push with Dawn Guard. Um, the problem is we're just trading for one Angel, although they're gonna start playing off the top of their library, so it's gonna get worse. <sighs> yeah, and then we'll get the Scry, because um, I do wanna play spells this turn, so I think maybe pushing. We may not have another chance to trade for Angel. Yeah, this case of the locked hothouse is going to get out of hand quickly. Lockdown is pretty good. So yeah, with Case of the Locked Hothouse, there's definitely starting to take over this game for sure. But yeah, Progenitor Exarch and Norn's Inquisitor definitely play well with uh, Warden of the Inner Sky. Okay, and I think this game is now over. But yeah, very cool to see Case the Locked Hothouse doing really well there. So we ended up going one and three. Um, I didn't necessarily expect a whole different, you know, ending there, but. I just wanted to kind of show you a little bit, and most of the time I'll just take this through like standard play. Um, sort of what my deck building, kind of how it starts, so the process looks like. And now I can like go through and maybe shave some cards that didn't work so well. Um, you know, and also notice cards that impressed me, like Norn's Inquisitor, um, you know, definitely Sanguine Evangelist, although we already kind of knew that was a good card. Um, and then, you know, question cards like maybe Predigenitor Exarch possibly might have some play with Warden or some kind of deck like that. So 
anyways guys thank you for watching i really appreciate it and this i know this is kind of different from my normal fare but um you know what i would do now sort of the next step is go in and sort of shave some cards down eventually get it down to 60 cards and then kind of go with that so thanks guys and we will see you next time